one of the things that we've talked about on many occasions is just your faith journey. Mm -hmm. And so would you mind just telling us how did you come to faith in Christ? Yeah, so I'm probably like a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of young people growing up. Your mom woke you up, you got mm -hmm. ready, you went to mm -hmm. church, and that was your routine, being in church. Um, went to Sunday school when I was young, and you know, some days we'd be at the church for just a service, and then you'd be out of there, call it you know, two hours, two and a half hours, right. depending on right. How, right. how Pastor Harrison, <laughs> Harrison was feeling that day at, right. at Pilgrim Baptist Church in Niag, New York. Pilgrim so, Baptist Church, yeah. boy. And depending Man. on how yeah. it was, and then other yeah. days you'd be there all day mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. different functions at the church. And I was about nine years old when I got baptized as a kid, mm -hmm. um, went through that whole process. And it wasn't until later in life I realized, like, even my mom's faith journey of being a single mom. My mom had 12 knee surgeries. And just like I remember at like around nine years old was the time that I think my mom's faith really grew because we were in church and we played football. So our games were always on Sunday. So from August all the way to like Thanksgiving, we would always miss church. But, you know, the months that, you know, we didn't have football, we were really like diving into church and being in there and um, just growing up and always being, you know, I think in that space. And then obviously like all young mm -hmm. kids, you, you grow and be uh, teenagers and young adults. And I feel like at that time I got away from it a little bit um, as far as just not going to church as much, you know, being a high schooler and having different things that was going on, um, playing football on Saturdays and Friday nights, and then always thinking like I'm relaxing Sunday or we have a practice to, to jog through Sunday. Um, and then being in college and, you know, going to church during training camp. But I think God, you know, even how we met today was through Walt. And I met Walt through this guy, John Maurer with Athletes in Action, which I met John through a guy, Sean Tucker, mm. who's back at Rutgers now, was a, he was a junior and he had very strong faith. And he, he would come to our dorm and be like, hey, I'm picking y'all up on Sunday. Mm. And he would pick us up on Sunday. He had an accurate legend. Mm. And we would all, we'd all Power crunch man. in the back <laughs> and he would take us to church. Right, and right. that was the first time I saw a guy in college, living the college life, mm. And he was living for God. Mm. And it was obvious to everybody mm -hmm. that was around him. And he would he would pick us up and take us and, and you know, not be overly preachy, but he would be like, Hey man, I want I want y'all to just come to church with me today. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we all looked up to him. So when he said it, we were like, All right, we're going to church with Tuck today. Right. And just that that wasn't all the time, but when he did and when he put that effort in, um, like my fourth year, um, just like I think living and having fun and um, one off season, you know, we had got a new chaplain, Jack Easterby, um, who I built a relationship with, but I wasn't really going to chapel service like that. I would meet with Walt, who was a former chaplain of the Patriots, and we would just talk. Um, not not about football. Like for the most part, we didn't even really start football yet. Mm -hmm. And we would just catch up and, and talk the gospel and just kind of hang mm -hmm. out and really fellowship. And as I got in and I experienced success and was living, I got away from that. And um, when Jack came in and he would just be around the locker room all the time and mm -hmm. he would hand me the, the sheets from chapel that day. Um, one, in 2013, that off season, I was like, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to chapel. And to God's glory, the, the conversation was about the guilt mm -hmm. of I'm going to wait. I'm, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to be good. And then I'm going to go to chapel. I'm going to. I'm gonna fix something over here, then mm. I'll be good with God, and then I'm gonna go. And that was the first, that was what they were talking about the day I went. Oh, wow, and wow. I was the Lord like, knew. I was like, all right, like, you got me. Yeah, you, right, you, right. I, I'm in here thinking I'm gonna do right and do, and you're telling me that there's no such. You just need to, you need to show up, mm -hmm. come as you are. And um, from that day on, been going to chapel, been locked in. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think one of the best things about having a relationship with people who are also walk, walking with the Lord is the challenges. And mm -hmm. I remember going on the Bible app and reading a verse of the day and be like, man, I'm in there, I'm reading. Right. And I remember Jack came to me and was like, man, we need, you need to be more bold. Mm. You need to pick up, you know, what you're reading. You need to, you need to do yeah. more, like wherever you're at, mm -hmm. there's another level and now you got to go up there. And I remember just sitting on that and, and figuring out what I needed to do and reading more. And mm -hmm. now it's podcasts, like it's different things that I do to help myself because now I understand my walk. It's not just, you know, I think in the beginning it was me really relying on other people to mm -hmm. help me and guide me. 
Um, and I think that's what's cool about, you know, taking ownership and your relationship with God yeah. and being able to, to fellowship with him and talk to him. And um, I feel like I'm at that point now where I'm, I'm obviously still learning and growing. Mm -hmm. um, and through different seasons of my life, I've seen that of how I've had to maneuver and mm -hmm. figure out what I needed to do next. You know, I think a lot of times we always think for athletes, it's about like the status of where you're at on the field. And yeah. for me, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the different things have come from being off the field, you know, mm. the things that me and my wife have gone through or my kids, my family that have had way bigger impacts on me than winning a Super Bowl. Right. Um, and I think that came from understanding mm -hmm. that I was more than just a football player, mm -hmm. which came from, you know, my relationship with God. Right, right. No, I think that's great because as you talk about your journey, and, and really understanding and grabbing a hold of your faith mm -hmm. as a, a young NFL football player, I know it's had a tremendous impact on, on every aspect of your life. And so you alluded to this a second ago in terms of talking about your wife and your family and the decisions you were making. So maybe describe a little more about how your faith has impacted, you know, all those other areas as well. Yeah, man, um, growing up, like I said, growing up with a single mm -hmm. mom, mm -hmm. um, I didn't see many married people mm -hmm. around me. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, um, a good amount of my friends had single mom or parents were, were broken up and I just didn't see that. Like that wasn't the norm um, where I grew up. And I never thought about it. Like I never, I don't, I don't think I was actively saying like, man, this is messed up mm -hmm. that I don't get to see marriage. Um, but it wasn't until going through premarital counseling um, with my wife and then, yeah. you know, two years earlier when my brother was going through premarital counseling um, with his wife, I remember him texting me and was just like, man, like what we thought about marriage, like we had no idea. And he was like, when you decide to get married, like don't get married if you don't do premarital counseling. He's like, it, it changed everything for me. And that was big for me. So mm -hmm. going through premarital counseling and actually seeing what marriage was in the Bible, you know, mm -hmm. the thought of, you know, me leading a family, right. you know, of my wife showing me respect, me showing her love and doing all of these different things that was in the Bible of, you know, raising your kids the right way and, you know, not living for what people think you should. Like, mm -hmm. man, I make the I make the money in the house, which when you're in the NFL, a lot of people told me that, like, well, you're making the money. You tell your wife what to do. You do, you mm -hmm. do this, you do that. Mm -hmm. um, your wife will listen to you. But understanding and going through that, I mean, it shaped who I, who I am as a father and a husband. And I would say, first and foremost, is me and my wife dictate our marriage on the word. So mm -hmm. no matter what's going on, it gives us something to stay mm -hmm. grounded. And if we disagree or... We're trying to get something done and it's just not going well. We just revert back to what we went through in premarital counseling, what we read in our word. Yeah. Um, and I think it's allowed us to have a foundation. And now we'll be married seven years um, mm. uh, at the end of April. And we've now been married long enough to see people get married, get divorced, right. go through tough times. And it's just whenever that happens, it's a reminder of the work that needs to be put in. And then at times, like when we kind of break it down, what different people have gone through, we're like, man, they're not, their marriage was never on the word or that's not something that they believe in and do. So for me, that's been everything. And, you know, just to tell a, a story in 2020, me and my wife in a good space, we had two kids. We had London and Brayden who were 13 months apart. Um, London was three going on four, Braden, um, two going on three, and we're about to have our, we're going to have our, our third child. And so like, we're about to be three, mm -hmm. three, mm -hmm. three under three, three. three. Right. Right. Um, and it's about to be real. And, and a pandemic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and, right. Um, May, May 23rd, my wife is sitting there and it's like noon. Uh, I'm I'm the big kid. I'm playing video games. She's sitting there and she's like, something feels weird. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't feel like I hear or feel the baby. I'm going to go to the hospital and go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of looking at her like, my wife's a big worrier. Like yeah. she, and I'm just like, you're doing too much. Like right. everything's fine. And so she leaves and I'm there with the other two kids. And I still remember it was like yesterday she calls me. And like, she can't really talk. She's just crying, mm. calls me and she tells me like, we lost a baby. Mm. And I remember just like, now I'm sitting mm -hmm. here, I'm watching, I'm actually trying to feed the kids lunch. Right. And like, I'm, I just like, 
like almost like if you're watching a movie or something and like the word the room starts spinning on a right, guy right, like i'm right. like that where like i'm just like I, like i don't know what to do with mm -hmm. this like, i don't even know mm -hmm. what you mean at this time we're eight like eight and a half months oh. pregnant like we're oh, wow. we're due wow. right around the corner uh, and um i remember like panicking and just like tell the kids like all right pack up all right i'm gonna take you to i'm gonna take you to nana's house and like just like your mind's not able like i, I could have just called my mom and my mom would have came to the house because she lives 15 minutes away but just the panic and i remember like grabbing her lunch grabbing pizza out of the fridge throwing in the car um and then i had forgot something inside and i remember um they're in the car like i'm half pulled out the driveway put the car in park run back inside and when I run back inside, like I call my brother and I just like fall mm -hmm. on the ground and just start crying because um, it was the first time like I got to get away yeah, yeah. from my kids and for like a good like 30 seconds, just sit there crying. And then everything else, you just kind of go into dad, like father, husband mode of like I dropped the kids off. And I, I, I remember telling myself, like, all right, you got to like you got to help your wife through this time by you gotta be strong for her, like we're, but I also remember once we got there and now, you know, we had already had two kids, so mm -hmm. you know the process. Right, so, right. and I think that's what crushed me the most, that the process doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Like my wife still had to deliver the baby. Right. And I remember um, you talk about having groups of friends. I remember being on a group text with uh, Slate, my brother and Deron Harmon, and I'm texting them the night before and I'm like, I don't think I could do this tomorrow. Like. Mm -hmm the baby's gonna come, like, I, I don't I don't think this is gonna work. Like, mm -hmm. I have, I just don't know. Them three just encouraging me, sending me scripture. Yeah. I mean, Slate sent me scripture for like a month and a half, two months. Mm -hmm. um, just continue to check in on me. Um, but I remember delivering, my wife delivering the baby and the nurse telling us, the doctor and the nurse telling us, like, we're gonna give you some time. Um, I know you might not feel like it, but you should spend some time yeah, with yeah. your daughter mm -hmm. um, because every parent that hasn't done that, they regret it not doing that. And I remember just probably the toughest, call it 15 to 20 minutes of sitting there mm -hmm. of the first time ever going to the hospital, having a baby, but right. not getting to take the baby home. As hard as that was, I was listening to a pastor, Charlie Dates out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, this was in the pandemic. so. There was no more meeting and chapel and all of that. And I remember I was like, man, I got to find something to like continue to fill me up. And I was just listening um, to his word. And he was actually going through the book of James, um, a series. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the book of James, you know, chapter one, verse mm -hmm. one, two, one, one and two, mm -hmm. or one to three talks about, you know, dealing with trials and tribulation, right. um, teaches perseverance and endurance. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I remember like, man, like I was just like, this was just in my ears and yeah, I listened yeah. to it and it was fresh on my heart. And it was already one of my favorite verses and hearing that and then going through that um, helped me out so much. And my daughter um, still to this day will ask about her sister Mia and will say, like she'll go and I remember for like the first year and a half, two years, wow. she would go and she would tell people like, yeah, I have a sister, she's just in heaven. Oh, and, um, that's it, powerful. It would be, me and my wife sometimes Man. would hear her mm. say it mm -hmm. and we just look at each other and start smiling. Yeah. Um, and it just goes to show like, everything doesn't work out the way mm -hmm. that you envision right. or that you would like. Right. Um, but there was something, there was some reason why she wasn't meant to be on this yeah. earth and, and went straight to heaven. And now to have a, another child chase, like mm -hmm. I swear we see like this this little bottle of energy mm -hmm. that has a little bit of everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's been very inspiring to see. Wow, yeah. man, I just wanna say, man, I just appreciate your, your transparency and sharing that story yeah. because so many families have dealt with um, having, um, having lost a child. Mm -hmm. And I know for my wife and I, we have four kids, but between our um, second and third, we also lost a child. Mm -hmm. And as a husband, oftentimes you don't have yeah, the no. words, right? Mm -hmm. Because as a mom, you know, they carry the child and yeah. they, they, there's, a, there's a different type of bond. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanna, you know, just, just say thank you, you know, for, for being open and honest with it. And, you know, I just pray that the Lord would use your your story to just encourage so many other couples yeah. um at, at one point actually in my church we had a a family 
that lost a child and we did a whole service for the baby uh-huh. as a as a way of just um, encouraging the couple but then also just letting them know that they're with uh, they're within a community uh-huh. of people that loves them that cares about them and that recognizes that you know you can't just throw scriptures at them uh-huh. to say all right you know this is abandoned to make yeah. you feel better but really to say that as we're as we're centered in Christ uh-huh. as we're in community together like we love you we care for you and we're walking uh-huh. with you yeah.